We're with Glenn Grappinet, who was the first person we contacted about my Zetterling on this project. So we'd like to talk a little bit about your work and life with my Zetterling, uh, which began, I believe, in the mid-1970s. 76, I think. In France? Yes, in France, in Belvezé, where you were. Can you tell us of the circumstances? I was invited by a, a man who was uh, the keeper of the house of my and my dropped there on that day and uh, she I didn't speak English she didn't speak French and uh, but it was very strange because uh, I was reading a Swedish mo uh, book from uh, a teacher who um, tell I don't remember the name of this uh, uh, she tells a, a story for a student how to visit Sweden and what is Sweden. And uh, the story is a small boy uh, who is very nasty with all animals in the farm and who is changed in a small person. And so everything becomes big. And then he fly over Sweden uh, with, uh, with a goose, on a goose net. And uh, that's how he visits Sweden. And when I arrived there, my was very small, and uh, the house was very big. The dog was enormous, 80, 90 kilos. Uh, the cat was very big. So I found that I was in the same story that I was reading. And uh, my uh, was very impractical. And uh, one moment she, uh, she wanted to show me something. And she took a petrol lamp, and instead of putting her hand on top for, to protect from the wind, she put it in front of the light. So we went, and then we end up in the dark. And uh, she ended up in my arm. <laughs> and that's how it starts. I see. <laughs> you see? And then I traveled with her for 10 years. For 10 like, years? Uh, like if I was uh, hanging on a goose ne neck. <laughs> And uh, this first uh, house, you had two homes. Yeah, Belvezé was the first house which she bought with uh, David Hughes, the writer, the English writer. And uh, she had to sell it because she was uh, much in debt. Then we get a lot of money for that house. But uh, when she pays the debt, there was not much money left. So she wants a small house with a lot of land. So we travel around the uh, Mediterranean, even Portugal, which is not Mediterranean, and uh, try to find something. And uh, we end up with a big house with no land. <laughs> because it was written on the ch chimney. Uh, it was written MS. And she thought it was, she always said, and it's MZ. <laughs> and do, you, do you remember what the MS? No no, 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 it was an old chimney, uh, uh, 1626 or something like that, which more or less was uh, the date she was born, uh, if you take away the six and you put a nine, <laughs> and MS and MZ, and uh, so that was her house. It was magic. Yeah, everything is magic was made. Everything was, was magic was Was, yeah. At Belvise, you say the, the mm. dog and the cat. Uh, one of her assistants, Elise Folio, mm. mentions that all the animals were white. No, 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 no. no some was black and white. Black and white. <laughs> some was white. white some was gray. Uh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember the first project that you worked on? Uh, first project was. Uh, no, I think uh, we plan to do something in uh, in Greenland. There was an Englishman. Uh, they are always crazy. This Englishman uh, was planning to travel around Greenland by sledge. Wally Herbert. Yeah, yeah, he was a very nice man, <laughs> and uh, Mai was supposed to shoot that film and follow the. the uh, the track of that uh, story. I got a book from him. 
and um, we end up in Thule, you know, uh, which was an American base, and it was very dark and we couldn't see anything because he started his trip in the winter. And I think they end up crashing through the ice or somewhere. <laughs> and, uh, well, they recover. They, they did. Wally Herbert and his that, that, that was the first uh, thing I think we did. And this was yeah. called Of Seals and Men? No, no, that's later. Okay. Seal of Men was uh, another story. It was, um, you remember, there was a big campaign about um, the skin of uh, seal. Yes. And uh, so uh, that was silly because um, Inuit got um, lost their economy because the killing of the, of the seal, which was made by the, the Canadian, not them. That was the base of their civilization. They, uh, they never kill a baby. They only kill adults because it's meat and it's skin and uh, the baby, it's a future big one. So this, uh, this campaign uh, destroys their economy. They couldn't sell any, any, anything and uh, and uh, then they became very much dependent to the Danish uh, help. And uh, the point was to show the truth about this thing and try to prevent this economy because we create a lot of uh, unnecessary things for them and they have to have money, so they have to sell their skin. And they could not. The so in, in, that, uh, in that small village, which was 400 people or something like that. In one month, when we stay there, there was three murder and uh, no, three suicide and one murder. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have, um, they was drinking anything. Uh, alcohol was forbidden, but they they drink perfume and things like that. And uh, and um, mostly it's because they was not very happy with the economic system that we have uh, built for them. Because the seals, the seal hunting was. But one of the things is was then they, they, they couldn't play the game of a uh, uh, capitalistic system uh, which because they, they, they couldn't produce what they could sell uh, because uh, that uh, stupid campaign not stupid but uh, that campaign the campaign against yeah. seal hunting yeah we saw that film recently and mm. the uh, dogs in that film are quite Interesting. Yeah, yeah. That was um, that's uh, a tool. A dog is a tool there. A tool, yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, it's better than uh, what is called a skidoo because you can always eat the dog. You can't eat a skidoo if you are uh, in a tempest and uh, if uh, the ice crash and you are uh, floating while you are hunting, uh, you you get lost. You know, then you can eat your dogs, but you can't eat a skido. And to have a skido, you have to have benzene. And if you have benzene, you have to to pay with money. And to have money, you have to sell your skin. That was the problem. <laughs> so the dogs were part of the economic system for them. Completely, too. completely. And the uh, in the film, you captured the sound of the ice cracking. Yes. Ah, yes. I was fascinating with that, and it was quite dangerous actually. Even when you were there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, one day we have to to run because uh, the ice was cracking one kilometers away from. Uh, one kilometer. Yeah, we was on the border of the water shooting seal, and uh, camping there, and I remember it was very funny because we forgot half of the tent, you know. So <laughs> it was 40 billows, and we was all shaking there, and. Uh, it was a, and, and the ice crack, and the Inuit know, according to the sound of the cracking, then we have to run, and with the dog, it's uh, it's crazy. They are amazing machine. So they are so strong, and uh, they can you can even uh, go in the water with the dog, which you can't do with a skidoo. So they can actually go in the water? Yeah, if it's a small crack of one or two meters, they will manage to, to, to go in the water and yeah, climb yeah, and bring the, bring the sledge. Uh, yeah, the, the sledge yes. wow. yeah. We've been talking about the documentaries that mm -hmm. um, Mike Zettling made, one of which you worked on, or perhaps several. But um, 
You mentioned in our conversations that uh, you felt that her documentary work was more uh, uh, important filmically than her feature films or other films. Well, that's my point you of view. Yes, yeah. and why do, you, why do you think that? Well, because I think uh, um, she she was more able to uh, express herself in uh, with a small crew than with a big one and uh, uh, not on the on the point of uh, her id her id was more on feature film than on documentary but as a filmmaker she was uh, uh, very good in a small crew because she need to have relationship with pe people she need to have uh, um, a close contact and uh, uh, to be just a director and direct uh, to she want to care about everything and uh, uh, on, on a feature film it's very difficult uh, you have to to delegate to people and that was not a strong point delegation was no, difficult no. For her. she have to to be in control of everything so in a, in a documentary she was she could do everything and uh, if you are one, two, three, or four person, it's uh, it's okay. Um, but when you are 30, 60, 50, it's, uh, she wants to be in control of everything. You worked on one of those larger feature films with her also called Amorosa. Yeah. In 19... Yeah. It was yeah. released in 86. Uh, that was more uh, of a large feature film crew. Yeah, and Scrubbers was bigger. I Scrubbers, think. yes. Yeah. Scrubbers uh, was in English. Yeah. Film. It was a lot of acting and a lot of uh, people, uh, and uh, the location was an uh, interesting place. But um, that was, uh, and um, syndicate uh, rules in England is more, more stiff and tough. So you have to have a lot of people around. And uh, in Sweden, this was, yeah, the union. And in Sweden, this was more light. So it was more family uh, work. And um, the pressure in Sweden on, on, the, on the filmmaker is uh, lighter. They have more confidence. In, uh, in, in, uh, in England, it was more pressure because uh, it's more like a business. They, the English say uh, film industry, which French and Swedish don't consider that way. They consider that more like art. So the pressure is different. But she was, uh, for example, when she directs Scrubbers, she wore uh, a fighting suit, you know? She, wa she, she was dressed all the film with a kung fu suit. A kung fu suit? Yeah, so that was a fight. Right. And she was... Uh, quite incredible little uh, monster going around and, uh, and sh shaking everything. This was a film about a girl's prison. Yeah. Delinquent yeah. girl's prison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of fighting. A lot of? Fighting. Fighting, yes. I was supposed to direct the fight, actually. <laughs> uh -huh, I have well. to train one girl uh, for because there was some violence in and we didn't take any stunt men. Uh, so I did, uh, I trained the girl more and less for this kind of uh, scene. So you acted as a stunt person for the, I mean you, yeah. you, you mm. trained her to fight. Mm. Uh, do you think her uh, approach or preference for the Swedish style, therefore, is related to her dislike of American filmmaking? She, I don't understand you, your question. She mentions that she was appalled by Hollywood and she did not enjoy working in Hollywood when she did work. Well, she was an actress in Hollywood, so uh, in Europe she became a filmmaker, which is uh, a lot a uh, step further for her. Uh, she was not satisfied to be uh, just a doll and a thing like that. She had to express things, and uh, especially about women, and uh, woman lips at that time was, uh, was a big, uh, big fight, and she was involved in that. Women's liberation. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so in America, she couldn't play that role because she was known as, as an actress. 
and um, I think she got more deeper friends in uh, in Europe. She people who speak the same language, and uh, especially in England, and she found money uh, through English people and. Uh, there was some men who have been in love with her and uh, who was producer, love, virtual love. Uh, and uh, she was quite seduced seeing girls. So she could find the right people to get some money. I remember to go with her in the clubs and uh, we met uh, Richard, Richard Attenborough, you know? Richard uh, Attenborough, yeah. Yeah, as you say. And uh, he fixed everything for her. Yeah. They were very close people, you know. And I think in the States, the money is more important. It's not the ID which is important in filmmaking. The idea. Well, I don't say that for everybody in America, <laughs> but, uh, uh, but it was more industry, easy. In yeah. Like in Sweden, uh, it's much more respect for my. Uh, there was respect for her as a person. They don't, the, the money is not so important. You see? And uh, that's why. We went in Greenland there and um, they uh, put us on a, on a piece of ice somewhere, on an iceberg, and uh, you can see the shooting, they, we are there. And just 300 meters away from us, there was white bear. And they went away with the helicopter. <laughs> and we was left there. <laughs> and there was a um, dead uh, uh, skull of men, you know, on the pile like that. And we didn't know that. And we didn't know what it was. <laughs> and there was white bear there. And the helicopter was away. Because my say, okay, we go and uh, shoot with a helicopter and all that, and we was left there with uh, our trench coat <laughs> and thing like that, with the bear <laughs> and no gun. And uh, the bear was coming to us, and the helicopter came and uh, they ran away. This was filming for Skanska. Yeah. The industrial film. Yeah, that was a very funny film. That was had, very funny. That had yeah. many locations. Mm. And Mai was very good there. Yes. Extremely good because she she made from a, a command, you know, uh, of an industrial film. She made something uh, like a fairy tale. And uh, I think that was her best. Enfin, not her best film, but she was at best in that type of uh, situation. And she was uh, on many different locations in that film. Yeah, we went twice around the world. What were some of the other locations? Uh, first, we went to choose the location together with Mai. And uh, then we choose some location and uh, we shoot in Greenland, in New York. Uh, we shoot in uh, Austria. I don't remember. Where did you shoot the scenes of the Middle East? Middle East? Yeah, there were scenes with... Uh, ah, that was Algeria. That was Algeria. Yeah, yeah, that was Algeria. Yeah. And uh, New York was very interesting because we were under New York. We saw that in Yeah, film. in that uh, fantastic pipe who brings the water in New York. And this was really uh, a strange place. We have to be protected from uh, from uh, a sniper from the Bronx who was shooting at uh, at the workers there, and uh, the police never found the, the, the right windows. So the, the Swedish company built a, a big wall to protect uh, the people. Is that right? Yeah, there was uh, some stupid people who was shooting at uh, workers. Good grief! Yeah, New York. <laughs> And uh, can you tell us something then about Amorosa? Amorosa. That was in Sweden. Yeah, that was uh, yeah yeah that was in Sweden. That was a, a good film for uh, for Mai because uh, she was related to 
she felt very close to the, the personage. And uh, she had a good relation with Tina Eggblad and uh, Erland Josephson. So that was, um, that was a very good crew and a uh, supposed good film. I didn't understand much about it. <laughs> I was not much interested in the, in the story. Uh, I was doing my job and, uh, and that's all. And what did you do for Amarosa? Uh, first, I, I was her assistant. So uh, I have to keep my in the right mood. So I have to help her from the beginning, before the production, in the production and in the post-production, to help her for everything. Because she, she worked 20, she always said that the day was too short, with 24 hours. So I was uh, a kind of uh, extra hours for her. So she could wake me up in the night and talk about the scene and say, uh, uh, I have a problem there and there and there. And then I have to try to think how I could help her. So it could go from the script point of view as a technical aspect. For example, in Amorosa, I remember um, she absolutely want, she hates in, in cinema, then we, you have somebody in focus and somebody out of focus and they are talking together. She hates that kind of thing. Uh, she always wants to have the people sharp, or unsharp, but not both. So uh, the cameraman, Reno Erickson, say we are in a too short, too small our, um, room, and uh, that's technical, technically impossible. And uh, I say, uh, as a photographer, then it was possible. So uh, Reno was a little bit upset, but I gave him a, a, a split field, uh, filter and uh, then the pictures is okay so both both people are sharp and it was just because I was a still photographer and uh, the cameraman don't use this kind of uh, filter usually because you have to have a, a fixed camera and you have to have a, a vertical or horizontal line where you put the split field just there so people should not, you see? So that was this type of uh, help I was doing. Try to make her easy in filmmaking, but in every aspect. Her relationship with Rene Erickson was a long one. With what? With Rene Erickson. Yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's uh, the invent together super uh, 16. Uh, they went to crazy place like uh, this uh, island in uh, Iceland who a pair, you know, a volcano came. They are the first people to walk on that. After it was forbidden, it was uh, only for scientific. We, But they, saw they, this, yeah. we saw this film in, mm. uh, I believe it was uh, in London. We saw this <coughs> film at the mm. British Film Institute. Black and white, yes. Uh, and we saw them going over the lava rocks in mm -hmm. Iceland. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was quite uh, a bleak, interesting mm -hmm. black rock. That was the kind of thing she liked to do, to be the first one in something. <laughs> so they were the first mm. non-scientists mm -hmm. to walk the... First human being. First human being. Yeah. Not even a spider went there first. No, nothing. It was just happening. It was very dangerous to go there. They just went there and uh, then they have to go away because it was dangerous. And after it was forbidden because for scientific reason, they want to see uh, our life come on a new island. Maybe they have polluted something. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so the scientific uh, story is not... Uh, but she wants absolutely to go there. You know? she, that's all. And uh, Rune, we work together in um, Amorosa and uh, in Of Seal of Men. And uh, that was the first time I met him. Uh, I was a uh, sound, uh, sound man. I never took sound in my life. And um, Rune didn't like me in the beginning because he, he wanted to have uh, one of his friends doing that job. And uh, we have a short money and uh, Mai want to be with me. 
she accepted that, uh, that film to go together in Greenland, because to go to Greenland at that time was quite exceptional. And uh, so she asked to have a good cameraman, but the cameraman want to have his own crew. And uh, she said no, so I went with her. And uh, Rune started to like me because I started to invent uh, things who are already invented, but I didn't know anything about sound. So, uh, because I noticed that I, when I hold a microphone, I could hear my uh, blood uh, beating in, in the end, on the Nagra, you know? You can hear your and heart yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so I took a broom, you know, the piece of wood, and I put some rubber and a circle, and I put my microphone there, so it was isolated. And I invent that at that time, you know? But it already exists. And then Rune saw that, and he said, well, that man is not stupid. <laughs> so I help him now. And he was saying, uh, then I did the second camera in that film. And uh, he was saying to me, if you put the sky and the sea a little bit like that, you never touch a camera again. And when we saw the rush, his <laughs> stuff was like that, and mine was perfectly. <laughs> and then we became friends. And then we did the editing with uh, Ted Roberts in uh, London, and that was the first time I was ed doing editing. And uh, that's that part of filmmaking, for me, is the most important thing. The editing? Yeah, it's uh, more than 50% of, of filmmaking. We, uh, but you have to have the editing first, in pre-production. <laughs> and production and post-production, it's... Uh, when it's really well prepared, and that's what Mai was very good at. She had every image in her head. She don't need to draw and thing like that. So that's why she has to, 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 to look after everything. And that's why in feature film, it was more difficult. Because suddenly there was somebody uh, who was doing a nonsense, like, uh, like um, for example, the, the clock is in the wrong hours. She could see that, and she had to tell to the person who is responsible, your clock is not in the right hours. Last scene was at 10 o'clock, and now it's uh, again at 10 o'clock, but the scene is three hours after, it should be at 1 o'clock. She could see that, and then she get furious, and then she lose her time as a film director. She want people to be perfect. And when you are three or four, it's more easy. She wrote an autobiography mm -hmm. called uh, All Those Tomorrows, mm -hmm. which we've given you. And you're, you're in that book quite a bit. In fact... I remember when she wrote that. It was in the Mazel. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. She said in the book that uh, you said to her, uh, you talk about yourself too much, maybe you should write a book instead. Yes, that was uh, actually... Uh, she was very much uh, egocentric, you know. She uh, she was a star, and uh, sh she has this kind of behavior. So uh, if there is a lot of people, she has to be the center. She uh, she could share with friends, but uh, when it's come to social thing, she she have to be the, the the center. Not always. I remember one one thing one um, one scene. Uh, a Frenchman came to uh, a famous French name, which I will not say the, the name, uh, came to visit us. And uh, that man uh, came in Belvese, and uh, he was so egocentric that he, he, he just kept on talking in French to Mai, which she didn't, she didn't speak French. And Mai was saying, yes, 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 yes. And then the man said, OK, now uh, it's time to go. It was lovely to see you and all that in French. And he went away. And uh, he didn't even notice that she didn't speak French, you know, in this last for one hour. So that type of thing was a little bit of Mai. She, she, she will not listen. She will follow her track. She will follow her ID. 
and that's the quality but it's uh, in some way it's a little bit boring so I, that's why I say write a book and after maybe you will be cure <laughs> you know she, but she was not cure <laughs> she will have some new idea again when she was writing the book she as part of uh, drafting the book she asked many of her friends and family to write about her mm -hmm. which some of them did yeah you see that's again it's a book about her and she asked people to write about her and I'm talking about her she will be pleased with that <laughs> Did, when you say she was uh, egocentric and uh, and talked uh, and, and self-involved, do you mean she, that she was performing all the time? No, 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 no. She was what she she what she said. She no, she was. Uh, uh, we say entière in French. I don't know how you say, um, like a stone. Oh. Yeah? Yeah. She 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 was one piece. That's all. Uh, she don't. She don't like to be flat, flattered, you know. She, uh, but uh, that was her own nature to be like that. That's all. For example, when I came back to from Japan, where I was uh, studying uh, Aikido and Yaido and Jodo and uh, a lot of things, uh, I came back to to France and uh, I n invite few of my friends uh, to speak about Japan because these people was involved in the same martial art than me and I was supposing then uh, uh, they will be interested in uh, in what happened in Japan f for me and to talk about Japan and after half an hour she said shut up with your story we don't care you see and she want to be the center so that's okay when you are two, when you live in a couple. You can have uh, exchange, but uh, otherwise it's too much, too much. And but it was never boring. No, I can imagine. <laughs> but people might have been tempted to flatter her. You know, people was attracted, attracted to her because she was famous and she was a type of person. So that, that suit her. It's just in a, in a, in a couple. It's difficult to leave this kind of thing. It's and um, and uh, another thing which make uh, well actually the, the the bad side of uh, of my in our relationship is then when we start filming. Uh, I remember in Scrubbers she gave me the second crew to direct and. Uh, I went on uh, doing some scene, extra scene, you know, when you are a second crew, uh, crew is not very important, but it's necessary. And um, I came back with my pictures, my film and uh, all that. And uh, she um, forgave me to, she, she didn't want me to look at the rush. So people see the rush and say it was excellent. And then she modifies the script. So my scenes are not in Scrubbers. It's her film, you see? But if it was somebody else, somebody who was paid for that, or somebody who was under her, the scene will be there. But uh, according to the people who have seen the rush, it was, I was going to be a good filmmaker. <laughs> then she couldn't compete. She didn't want that kind of thing. And that's more or less the story, the, the beginning of the end together. I see. Because uh, uh, I try to work with her uh, in different film. I try to bring her in a different type of film, so she could express uh, her, um, her, mm, mm, her skill in uh, in filmmaking, but different story than. Uh, not story from her point of view or her, uh, so I say to her uh, just make a western make a spy movie make a, a, a thriller or thing like that try to make something different and uh, she was not against the idea so we was making some scripts together during the day and talking uh, 
I remember that, uh, for example, we uh, we play for two, three days on a, on a script uh, called uh, uh, Jane Bond. So it was a girl who have big tits and uh, kill the people with the tits, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> we squeeze them to death. Yeah, we build up a, a kind of story like that, you know. So it was a little bit of feminist thing, <laughs> and uh, but this was a, a, a spy, spoof, a a spoof spy on James So, but after she said, no, it's not serious. We can't do that. We have to be more intellectual. <laughs> certain themes and ideas that were always repeated, not always, but many times repeated. One, for example, in her uh, short film for Visions of Eight, the Munich Olympics, mm -hmm. where she was asked along with seven other directors to make a film about a specific sport at the Olympics. She chose weightlifters because mm -hmm. she said they are obsessed and alone and isolated. Mm -hmm. And when she was interviewed on French TV three or four years after that. She said she was interested in loneliness and freedom. So I wonder if uh, you can give us some insight into her own obsession with isolation and loneliness and why she felt these were so important a part of her artistic expression. Well, actually, the, the truth about uh, Vision of Hate is not uh, because she was obsessed by uh, loneliness and things like that. It's because she was interested by that couple, which you see in the movie, which is a big man and a small man. Is that right? That was the contrast of them who was interesting for her. And uh, they were actually, actually friends, these two men, these two boys. And uh, that's what fascinated her. This was uh, the most important thing. So maybe she say on TV. She then, said that to the press. Yeah, that but it was uh, a lonely sport. Yeah. Maybe, may, yeah, but uh, she don't know anything about sport because every sportive man is alone when he's competing. You know, you have to win. So maybe winning and uh, loneliness is the same story in her point of view. But. Uh, What about the rest? I, I think uh, uh, she was not really alone. She was alone because she wanted to be alone, because she put herself on a, on a star system, and she had to have uh, people who look at her and uh, listen to her. Then you become alone, you know? And that's maybe one of the things which I, I reproach to, to her not to open herself to much more to social uh, life. For example, uh, I think she's an artist, but she's not a politician. She's not interested in, uh, in the city life. She's not interested in changing the world. She wants to express things from, from herself that's been alone. And she put people around her to satisfy that thing. And uh, so um, her, her deep idea never come out. Uh, her deep ideas? Yeah, I don't think so. What were uh, some of those, do you believe? Of this deep idea? I don't know. I don't know. It belonged to her. Uh, her deep idea, for example, uh, again, when she, she, she worked for the woman condition and thing like that, and which you see in, in her film and thing like that, it's uh, um, it's more uh, one person who say thing, but it's not it's not political. You understand what I mean? And I'm, I'm, when I talk politics, uh, I don't say uh, politician. You know, uh, I'm saying uh, politic is to care about the city. Oh, it's mean, yeah, to uh, and uh, so it's little bit political. The woman lips. But it's her point of view. It's uh, it's come from her, not not from uh, all generation, uh, the complete uh, all the women 
because all the women are not like that. When I met her, she was completely in that feminist uh, uh, crew. In the second wave of feminism yeah. in the yeah. late 60s, early 70s. She was even homosexual, you know? And uh, I, I, <laughs> I need to say something very bad. That's <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, no, 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 no. I, I don't think that way. Uh, I, she, she went back with men, with me before she was with ladies, after, before she was with men, and after, she, during that... So she experimented with... Yeah, but she, she, yeah, she was much in love with someone uh, around where we live. And uh, then she came back with me uh, to that style. And uh, when, we, when, when we experiment some of this uh, movement, uh, she she opened a little bit her mind. Then then it was too too close. To um, it was very much a self adoration of people between themselves, and she played that role. You know, that's why I try to bring her as a filmmaker to a higher step, which means not as making film like a woman, not making film like a man, making film like a human being. And which means then her idea will, uh, will become political. It was too much, uh, um, all these feminist films are too much kind of masturbation, intellectual. For me, that's my point of view. And she, she didn't manage to do that, and especially in feature film. She stay, I did two feature films with her, Scrubbers and Amorosa. It's all about women. I would like her to do something else. And uh, she was not, this was not possible for her. She stayed on that. Amorosa <coughs> was also about, <coughs> excuse me, um, madness. Yes. Insanity. Hmm? This writer who was the <coughs> Main character, but Agnes it's not Wood. a writer. It's a woman writer, different. Yes, who wrote about women? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Agnes von Kurzen Scherner. She wrote about the woman's condition mm -hmm. early in the in, early in the twentieth century, actually. And she was off and on institutionalized. This mm -hmm. writer. Mm -hmm. And this seemed to interest my Zetterling. Yes, sure. This issue of... Again, we are on the same schema. You know? And that's what... Uh, uh, what I mean, again, f it's... It's her life, it's her story, it's uh, her way of doing. But she, just what I want to say to you is that she was not able to do something else than that. And that's great. But it's sad, because I think she could have done something better. Because she had if she had forget that story, and she was doing better thing in uh, documentary, because that was not about women. For example, of Seal of Men, it's an interesting film because it's about a community, and and the cause is interesting. And her other documentaries about gypsies. About yeah, I don't. See, I didn't, Iceland, didn't see that. About uh, Stock, the city of Stockholm. Police woman. Did but you work on police? Women? No, 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 no. But it's police woman. Lady policeman. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful film. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Vision of Eight is about these two men, and that's very good. It's a masterpiece. For me, it's a masterpiece film. Oh yeah. Mm. The war game too. The one she she win uh, it was the a golden lion yeah, yeah. award. No, silver, yes. silver, not the golden. Sil oh, it was silver. Silver, silver. No, the press says golden, doesn't it? Yeah, but yeah. let's put some gold on it. <laughs> she won't. <laughs> yes, the documentaries are about community. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Rather than about. But you felt that the others were about herself. It's she's the. Uh, a complete person, and she is what she has made. That's all. But uh, uh, as 
in a couple, I would like her to, to go a little bit further because I was not much interested. And we want to work together. But I couldn't work only on women. And I couldn't be, I, I didn't want to be under. I want to be equal. I see. So that, that, that's, that's a problem of relationship between men and women. But she couldn't move higher than that. She has to be higher than me. You understand? Yes. And, and, and I think this, for me, in a political way, as I understand, it's, uh, it's too selfish. You understand? Yes. It's, uh, it's minor. And she could have been ma major. You understand? But she has not done that. She stay in her own phantasm. After uh, the late 80s, she, during the late 80s actually, in the early 90s, she went into a lot of television. Mm -hmm. Did she do any while well, you were with her? No, no, no. We, we stayed 10 years together, so I think I, uh, we quit at uh, 86, something like that. And then I have, she lived three or four years more. That's all. But um, well, actually, eight years more. Eight years more. Yeah. Really? Well, yes. When you get old, it goes fast. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it yeah. does. So, uh, in in your relationship, can you talk about the end of your relationship? Uh, that was a surprise. Uh, she invites some friend of her to the house, and. Uh, I didn't understand anything, but they start to speak Swedish, which she never speak, usually. And they was all speaking Swedish, and I was uh, really uh, becoming a servant. Uh, and uh, people was doing things which I didn't like. For example, uh, making yoga in the middle of the kitchen, which I think is not the right place. The kitchen is make, to make food not yoga. And uh, so there was always some, something in between me and, uh, and the reality where I was living. And this house, I have built the house. I've made everything there. And uh, then she, uh, I was very badly considered. Like, uh, for example, um, Glenn do this, Glenn do this, Glenn do this all the time. I was serving these people. And uh, one moment I say, uh, no, I don't play that game. I don't want. And they say, she said to me, if you are not happy, go away. And uh, then I was drinking a cognac. And uh, I said, OK, maybe she considered that the cognac is her. And I threw the cognac to her. And uh, then it was start to fight. And the, the other girl was uh, pushing her. To, towards me and then I went uh, away and say okay I go away and I will come back when these girls will be away and uh, I must have been in a very bad state because I went uh, uh, away with my slippers and I took a bag with my Aikido bikes and uh, I went to the bank put my credit card in the thing to take a little bit of money and there was no money. The account had been cancelled. And it was my money. I put 30,000 French francs up one week before. And uh, she cancelled the account, which she was not uh, allowed to do because it was a commune account. And uh, then I was furious. I came back to the house. Nobody was there. The house was closed. I don't know where they was. And I break the door uh, to go in and to take uh, some shoes <laughs> and try to find few. So I end up with uh, 10 francs and the police was there mm -hmm. saying, uh, Glenn, uh, you have to go and, uh, because I knew them very well. And uh, I give them my guns. I have a lot of guns. And uh, then they keep my guns in the police station. And then I went away. And that was the end. It's uh, very strange. Ten years of life together, rebuilding completely the house, uh, working together, and 
I didn't understand at all what's happened. And I saw her maybe two years uh, after on the road. We, I stopped her car and we talked and she said, uh, okay, uh, you can, uh, you can come to to us and we will talk uh, to to the place and we will talk and this that the only thing she talked about was pipe was broken and I have to fix it and I say no man I will not fix your your shit pipe and thing like that so I go away then I went away and uh, I didn't see her later but I found. Uh, I, I was working on a, a British uh, series um, as a, I was, uh, what I was, I have a title, very, 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 I was uh, assistant producer, which means in that case I was a driver. <laughs> and uh, I, um, I was driving a man who was a big producer and uh, he was English, and he asked me why I speak uh, English. And I say, uh, because I've been working in film, and, uh, and he knew very well my attorney. And he said, uh, could you fix an arrangement uh, with her, because we could uh, offer a few, few uh, hours in this series. This was the uh, William Tell The Tell William Tell, Tell series, yeah. yes. And I say, okay, but uh, okay, I fix that, but uh, I would like to not to drive, to do something else uh, in this series. And he say, okay, well, no problem. If you fix that, I will give you an uh, opportunity of... Uh, if you bring her in yeah. as a director, in other words. And it was a producer, you know, and he was producing many things. And uh, so I fix the thing, and uh, my say, okay, I accept only if Glenn is sack. From the thing. Then I was sick. Then I lost if, my job, and she got a lot of money if from. You, if, only if you were not working. Uh, so was. that that that's really another bitter end, you know. Right. <laughs> you right. see. Right. Yeah. And uh, I don't understand why. So that you can say he has done something bad, and uh, he doesn't want to remember. But actually, I tell you, I don't know why. I just ask to be a man beside a woman. She didn't want to have a man beside her. She wanted to be Why do you think the leader. That is? Was she afraid? Well, first we have 27 years difference, you know? 27 years. Yeah, so she was the age of my mother, which they have a very good uh, contact together. Uh, so, uh, I think she was getting old, and uh, I don't think she was getting old, and uh, she felt then it will be difficult for her to to be a, a seducing woman towards a man who was 34, because I live with her between 24 and 34, and myself I was preparing uh, the the thing then. I will have an old lady, but an old lady is lovely. When you see the pictures of Michel Rosier, it's a lovely woman. You can love her. Okay, it's maybe not sexual, but it's a tenderness and uh, and uh, it's nothing to do with love, so sex. And uh, I was preparing this kind of thing uh, in myself, but she didn't want that. She wanted to stay a star. With she sexual prowess, power. Is that what you mean? No, no, not not specially. She she want to be loved, but for but the difference was very big, you know. In uh, and especially when a woman get old, she get older than a man, very quickly, you know. So the, the age proportion is different, and uh, a man die before usually. <laughs> but uh, the, it was becoming more and more difference between us, uh -huh. you see, and she couldn't take it. It was too difficult for her, as a pride, as a, a, a beautiful woman, she was, and she was getting, not, a, she, she was getting a beautiful woman, but a beautiful old woman, with a man who was getting more and more a man, because at 34 it's the age of men, 
and uh, and I have the will of being somebody in cinema and uh, she couldn't lose everything instead than to be a mentor you understand she wants to play still the game of men and women yes. you see it's, it was a just pride matter of pride for her and that's why I think she one day asked some friends I'm not sure at all uh, she asked uh, some girlfriends to come to help her to break because it was too much for her right you see so she knew mm. for example in the last years of uh, maybe two three years before we break she said, okay, you are young, I'm getting old. It's normal that you have, maybe because I'm getting less interested in sexual life, then you have some love affair around. But I want to know. And uh, for me, this was very interesting. <laughs> so I jumped on that story. And uh, when she came back from a film, I, I don't remember which one, because we didn't work together. Uh, she said, uh, so did you have some love affair? Then I try to start chronologically. So I start with the first one and I stop. I didn't uh, went on the story <laughs> because uh, she was extremely jealous and was possessive. She? Yeah. She was extremely and jealous. The, I told her the story of this girl, the first girl I, uh, I went with. And uh, there was some other girl after because she went away for six months. And, uh, but after the first story, I have to stop because she will not take the second one, not the third one. You understand? And uh, because she became hysterical. Did yeah. As a possessive lady. And, uh, oh, this girl was nothing. And, uh, okay. Okay, <laughs> stop. So, she was not able to take the truth. You understand? Even she suggested it. Yeah. yeah. This was, you know, it's easy intellectually to suggest things like that. But when it's come to heart and inside, uh, it's difficult to take. Can you talk a little more about uh, her family life? <laughs> None no family life she she was not interested in that she was feeling guilty about it she um, i make her uh, going back to her mother uh, because she have no contact with her mother for years before and, you knew her yeah and i was interested to to meet this uh, lady who was actually an extraordinary lady her mother. Yeah, she was a kind of tall lady, strong, and uh, she was uh, with a lot of homosexual men around, and she was playing this kind of uh, story, and uh, and um, she was very nice with us, and Mai was a small girl there, so it was very interesting. So we met her two, three times. She had uh, a girl called Etienne. Uh, who live in the uh, outskirts of Stockholm in a very bad condition and uh, she uh, felt extremely guilty with that because that girl was uh, on social security uh, thing and uh, thinking that she's a little bit crazy and actually she was or she is still I don't know and uh, so she was feeling very guilty about that, and uh, she, when she had a little bit of money, she was sending some money to her. That was her uh, contact. To her daughter. Mm. But uh, we went once there. She was uh, not able to take her in her arm. It was a, it was a bad side of her. You know, the, 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 the bad story, uh, the dark story. And, uh, but she was much closer to her son, Louis, to her son. who is um, uh, a teacher in university. And uh, so then we went many times there. And uh, Louis is particularly intelligent man. 
This is her son who lives in Barcelona. Yes, yes. And uh, that's all. That's all. This was not... Uh, she... She has grandchildren through Louis. Yes, I only knew uh, the girl, the first girl. Um, she was a very small girl. But she was not uh, interested in family, not at all. I think her family belonged to uh, a very old past. She has these two child when she was quite young, with Tuti Lemkov, who was a dancer. And uh, they was... Uh, they grow in uh, in England with David Hughes and uh, she was filming and uh, she was never there so there was always somebody looking after and David Hughes uh, her husband but uh, she felt guilty about that she but she she always say you don't need to feel as a mother because you are a woman you don't need. It's not. Uh, uh, it's not automatic. She all was saying to me very often. She was saying that uh, one hundred percent of the women think they have to feel like a mother one moment in their life, but that's not true. She said that there is maybe twenty or thirty percent of women who are not mother, who are just human being, or lover, or mistress, or what they want, but not mother. And she was one of those. And she, she claimed, she claimed uh, the, the, the right of not being a mother. You understand? Yes, definitely. Mm. Very interesting. Yeah. And I think you can find that in a movie. When you throw a baby in a can. Throw a baby in a can? Yeah, you have Which that movie in... Which is that? Dr. Glass, the uh -huh. film. When uh, when did when she threw a baby in a oh a this fetus. Was, uh, night games perhaps night game or I don't night know game. one of those black and white film stillborn yeah yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah she 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 had a birthing scene in one of her feature mm -hmm. films mm -hmm. so but that was the way she felt about motherhood it was not universal and not automatic no yeah. Other people we've interviewed have, have said that she had a strong interest in what we call paranormal mm -hmm. uh, things, uh, such as uh, the Ouija board and astrology. And, mm. uh, I think I have answered before. Yes. Yeah. So I have She no... had this interest too. Yeah, but... She wrote her dreams down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, when you start to speak about it, then they start to exist. I see. But what is uh, the truth? And uh, I was not in her head when she was dreaming, but I can notice that her dream change when she talked to one, to two, to three, or four person. It was not exactly the same dream. <laughs> but it was more and more interesting. That's for sure. <laughs> and that's, I think, I think that's, a, that's a point of being an artist. I'm not an artist. And my is kind of a bubble, you know, in the sky. And I believe that if you want to be a big person, you have to have the foot on earth and the head in the sky. She was in the sky. But down to earth was towards the garden and towards the thing like that. She needed to, to be in, uh, in the ground. But to social life, she was not done to us. With other people around? With people, with money, with, uh, with everything. She was not done to us. You know, for example, she was going to, to the market and uh, instead of bringing uh, the food, she was bringing a thousand of flowers, you know? That's very romantic, but uh, you don't eat so much flour. So, Sometimes we eat flowers in salads, but uh, <laughs> I prefer pigs <laughs> or cheese. Yes, in fact, uh, the place we stayed in St. Paul Le Jeune, mm. uh, the lady and her husband had met my Zetterling, 
and at a small luncheon party where my served a salad with flowers. Yeah. And the lady said, that's the first time I knew mm. it was possible to eat flowers. Yeah. So she, she was a good coach. That's what everyone said. Mm -hmm. But that's say my mother. She was rich to be a good cook because she put double cream. She put uh, more things than uh, my mother will have done. You know, my mother is an excellent cook, but it's cost half the price. <laughs> and has half the calories. No, no, that, 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 that. she never considers that thing. Yeah. Mine either. She never considered that thing. But it's more easy to make good food when you put a good thing in. When you use yeah. good ingredients, yeah. yes, it's true. She ba baked her own bread. Yeah, yeah. Well, she could do everything. She used to have goats, too. But I never met them. You didn't have the goats? When you <laughs> no, no, no. And uh, I think uh, my say that the goat was able to read a script and eat the page when there was no good. <laughs> you see? Goats, goats eat everything, don't they? Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> and she was writing and the goat was coming and eating the page. So I said, oh, that must have not be good. <laughs>And she used this friend many times in different films. And uh, what else? Uh, we saw pictures. She thought. Uh, we yeah. saw a picture, two pictures of her with Little Richard. No, Cliff Richard. Cliff Richard. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Command performance. Mm, I don't know that. We were I know that she was uh, very impressed by David Bowie. And uh, she met him in, uh, in a project which was made by Alan Parkett, Parker, the film Birds. She was supposed to do that film. And uh, Scrubbers was uh, produced by uh, George Harrison, one of the Beatles. And uh, one of the men who worked with her was uh, Ray Cooper. It was uh, the drummer of uh, Earl, uh, I don't remember his name, but one of these famous uh, rock singers. And uh, they was very much involved in music. And uh, she, uh, she was very friend to uh, another Glenn, Glenn Gould, Glenn you know, the pianist. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, I even suspect she had a love affair with him. <laughs> Uh, while we were together, when she was in Canada. And uh, so she, she, for, for her, it was very important. The music in film was very important. Uh, she loved Nino Rota, who was uh, in Fellini films and things like that. She uh, even liked the music from uh, the Sergio Leone films. Uh, the dramatic effect you can find in this kind of uh, spaghetti western. And uh, so for her, it was belonging to, to pictures. So, so she was very, very, very careful about the choice of the music according to the pictures and the editing. It has to be in rhythm. And again, Vision of Eight, it's one of the things where you can see the, the best use of music. I don't know if you remember. Yes, we do. The music, the Bavarian music with uh, the army with uh, dismantling the halter, the weight. Playing uh, the yeah. national anthems. Yeah, yeah, all that. So. Ah, uh, Mai was a lovely lady. She uh, have uh, 
quite an unordinary life, but uh, she chose to have this life. So she missed the ordinary life. And that's very sad for her. <laughs> but she was in control of her life. No, nobody's in control. Did you think she want to have a, a liver cancer? No, so she's not in control. No, no, she was open to uh, event, and uh, that's make her reacting, and she react in a, her way, her creative way. The only thing I think sad about her is that she was not enough successful for, uh, and uh, she didn't give um, a message to people. She only give a message to women. And that's half humanity. And that's not enough for the greatness she, is, she was. This is a message you think she gave that men cannot understand? or? Yes, but that's not enough. Why did she talk about uh, men liberation? She just talked about woman liberation. And that's sad. Because she could do that. But she just stay as a woman. And that's, I think, she, she deserves more. And she could have done that. But she didn't want to listen. Men. <laughs> you think she missed uh, a little bit about men then? You think she maybe understood women better because she studied them more? No, I think she was... She, this type of lady are more at ease with men. Uh, because they are very strong lady. Uh, I think she prefer men than women, but she uh, she used that track for her uh, her career. But uh, uh, that was not enough. She she was concerned, very much concerned. But uh, uh, I think she could have been uh, a bigger person if she was considering the male point of view, which she did not. That's all. <laughs>